The Canadian invasion that was supposed to impact the local coffee shop scene has apparently left town. Tim Hortons, the Toronto-based coffee and donut shop, has closed signs at nearly all of its Twin Cities locations. CCX News stopped by the Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center locations. Both had signs on the door saying they had closed. And the closures apparently came without warning. They appear to be linked to a lawsuit filed by the ownership group of the Twin Cities franchises. The lawsuit accuses the Canadian company of overcharging for certain items that the franchises are required to carry. It's a big week for the Wyzetta Science Bowl team. They have won the national competition. If you don't know why Xenon-135 is a neutron poison, or even what a neutron poison is, you're not alone. But these Wyzetta kids do, and that's why they're national champs. The Science Bowl is put on by the Department of Energy. Just getting to nationals requires a wide store of science knowledge. The Wyzetta team beat schools from across the country. I can't say enough about them, and they're a well-rounded group in that they are they're involved in other things. They're not just your typical nerdy science kid. They actually have a lot of other things going for them and, and they're a great team. They work well together. Being national champions has its perks too. The kids now get to take a science-focused trip to Cordova, Alaska in July. Two and a half weeks remain of the 2019 legislative session and local DFL House leaders expect this to be a long weekend of budget negotiations. We have three complete budget proposals that we're bringing to conference and to negotiations. And in order for this session to be different from so many that preceded it, we need to do things differently. We need to continue to drive very, very aggressively. The DFL-led House, the Republican-controlled Senate, and DFL Governor Tim Walz set a Monday deadline to agree on spending caps so conference committees can get to work on 10 different budget bills and a tax bill. Uh, it was the Speaker's initiative to bring these new deadlines to the table in the first place and get agreement from the Senate and Governor Walls. The House has been pushing because we know that it is very difficult to finish a legislative session on time when you have divided government. In fact, it's been uh, at least two decades since that has happened. The legislative session adjourns on May 20th. Saturday is National History Day, Minnesota. Thousands of students have made it past their local and regional levels to advance to state competition. I Eighth grader Lainey Murphy from Sacred Heart School in Robbinsdale is one of the students competing. Lainey's project is called Nature of Love and focuses on Harry Harlow and his monkey experiments. When the monkeys were given the wire mother, they didn't run to the wire mother with the food. They ran in circles and then they ran to the walls and started clawing. But then when he put the cloth mothers in, the monkeys ran right to the cloth mothers for all that comfort and support. It took months for students like Lainey to complete, complete their assignment. At least 7,000 students are participating in the competition. Cinco de Mayo celebrations take place across the Twin Cities this weekend. A Robinsdale brewery found a way to spice up the festivities. Wicked Wart is releasing two special edition beers on Saturday. One, an Imperial Vienna Lager, is brewed with agave syrup and aged in tequila barrels. Another, called Rude Awakening, is an Imperial Breakfast Stout. It's brewed with chocolate, coffee, and aged in hot sauce bourbon barrels. It's a, a bourbon barrel that they then aged hot sauce in, and then we aged our beer in after that. So it kind of imparts some of that kind of spicy hot sauce flavor that's really tasty, but not burning your mouth like a habanero pepper or anything like that would do. Wicked Wart will have the R Taco food truck on hand Saturday evening, as well as live music. Champlin Park High School tackles tough subject matter in its spring production. Neil Persley has a preview in today's Weekend Showcase. Champlin Park has really hit a home run with their selection of blood brothers for their spring musical offering. These two twin brothers who are separated at birth because their mother is too poor to 
keep both of them and keep them cared for well enough. And so she gives one of them away to a richer mother and the two of them grow up never really knowing that they're twins, but constantly finding themselves back in each other's life. The superstition hanging over the performance is that if the boys ever find out that they are brothers, they will die. I've learned so many new skills as an actor to like really get those gut-wrenching scenes, that emotion. This has been the hardest show I've ever done. Cecily Gaspar gives an outstanding performance as Mrs. Johnstone, the biological mother of both boys, who is also the cleaning lady to the wealthy family that she gave up Edward to. It's a very hard show to work on, and it's really fun to be able to explore the character and find the depth of the characters, just because it's a new experience and it's the characters are very hard to find, and you have to be able to be very vulnerable on stage, which is really fun. Not many really know about this show and so the audience going in most of them they're gonna not know what's gonna happen what's going on and in the end things will just all click together and then who knows maybe people want to see it again the story is tragic but these actors do such a fantastic job and play so far above their high school age that I couldn't help but be moved by the performance. Well done, Champlain Park. I give Blood Brothers a rating of G for gripping. For Weekend Showcase, Neil Persley, CCX News. Blood Brothers runs through next Saturday at Champlain Park High School. And as we go to break, check out what you can see this weekend at the Maple Grove Community Center. There are more than 100 quilts of all shapes, sizes, and designs on display both Friday and Saturday. This year's show is called Friends of a Feather Quilt Together. When high school sports were a new thing for girls in the early 1970s, the Athena Awards were started to recognize the accomplishments of female athletes. The awards are still going strong. The 47th annual Athena Awards ceremony took place Friday in Bloomington. One senior female athlete from each participating school from Minneapolis and its suburbs is chosen as that school's Athena winner. It's an incredible group of talented performers. We talked to three local winners today. I mean, it's a great honor, like, being chosen from one out of my school and being with all the other athletes. It's really a great honor. Um, it's great to see all these other athletes that have done great things throughout their career. So I think it's nice for all of us to be able to dress up and do something different. So. Yeah, it's amazing. There was a lot of good athletes at Maple Grove, so it was an honor to be chosen as the Athena winner. And it's so cool to be at an event with athletes as amazing as these and just getting to meet them and stuff. It's pretty cool. Here's a list now of all the Athena winners from the Northwest suburbs. We'll hear from four more winners starting Monday on our Sports Jam show on CCX. The Wayzata Boys lacrosse team has enjoyed success in recent years with four state tournament appearances in the past five seasons. Thursday night, the Trojans played host to fourth-ranked Eden Prairie. Second quarter, Eden Prairie's Jacob Bree gets away from the defense and rifles that shot in for a goal. Wayzata's Mateo Tice breaks in and fires. That shot stopped, though, by EP goalie Garrett Smith. Mike Benson makes a run for the Eagles, and he scores with the long stick. Then EP with a pretty goal, Will Aldrin setting up Will Foster for the quick strike, and it's 5-2 Eagles. The Trojans try to rally. Hayden Davison rips a shot that's knocked aside by Smith, and the Eagles go on to win it. 5-2 is the final. It's been an up-and-down season so far for the baseball teams at Maple Grove and Park Center. Those two school district rivals met up on the diamond at Maple Grove Thursday. Crimson starting pitcher Tyler Bourne was keeping the Pirates off balance early, striking out Mason Clem here in the second inning. Bottom of the second, and Bourne at the plate. His grounder to short is bobbled. That allows Jeremy Click to come in and score the first run of the ball game. Back to the mound, and another strikeout for Bourne, fanning Jose Gonzalez in the fourth. Pirates pitcher Riley Peterson was just as effective. He strikes out. Bennett Lewis and the Crimson fourth inning with the game still 1-0. 
Park Center trails 2-0 in the sixth when Tanner Sherva grounds to short. The Crimson will take the out at first base, but Sam Kill comes in to score to get the Pirates on the board. It's 2-1. Bottom of the six, Maple Grove adds two more runs. They win four to one. Crimson are playing in the St. Cloud Apollo Invitational this weekend. Also in the Northwest Suburban Conference, Totino Grace played at Champlin Park. The Eagles' Carter McLaughlin rips one down the right field line in the third inning. And this one will clear the bases. Alex Stevens, Ben Palmer, and Andrew Christofferson all score on the double by McLaughlin. And it's three to nothing, Grace. Next inning, Palmer at the plate, and he gets a hold of one. Drives this pitch deep to left field and out for a two-run homer. He puts the Eagles ahead 5 to nothing. They would add two more runs in the third to lead 7 to nothing. Then in the fourth inning, it's Eric Ratacek sending one deep to left center. This one's not caught as it hits to the fence. Quinn German and Palmer both score to give Totino Grace a 10 nothing lead as the Eagles are well on their way their seventh win of the season. Champlain Park does score twice in their half of the fourth inning. Tyler Nelson flares a base hit out to left field. Brian Carter Fox with the run. But no more scoring after that as Tutino Grace wins by a final score of 10 to 2. That's all for sports. More news after this.